to tonight on Professor Speaks. We'll take a look at the Saints' thrilling victory over the Seattle Seahawks in the Mercedes Superdome. We'll also take a look at how the Saints have managed to win three of their last four games and have a big test coming to them in San Francisco and whether or not the Saints can continue their winning ways. Hey, maybe the team can get to 4-4 four and four and be right in the thick of things, not only for the wild card spot, but in the division. They're only one and a half games out. Are you excited about our team and how they have transformed and transitioned from the 0-3 start? Do you feel that the Saints will be able to continue their winning ways? And or do you feel that this we've seen this picture before four out of the last five years where the Saints make it to 500 only to collapse in the second half of the year? All this and much more as we pass out mid-year grades and grades for the Seattle game, all here, right here. Keep your URL locked in at The Professor Speaks. Hit it, Kyle. Listen up, Saints fans and who that's from all over the world. Class is in session. The professor himself, Derek Craig Stevens, is about to drop some knowledge down on you in the Who That Nation. So get out your pen, your pencil, your pocket protector, your tablets, everything you can, and listen up. It's time for the Professor Speed! All right, all right, all right. I got my second line, my umbrella, and my handkerchief <laughs> as we celebrate the Saints' thrilling victory in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome on last Sunday. Well, it is another Friday night, November the 4th, 2016, and I hope the ghosts, the goblins, and all of that, you guys had a good trick or treat, and we were tricked and we were treated as the Saints beat it the two-time Super Bowl attendee and one-time Super Bowl champ and a perennial playoff and tough team in the Seattle Seahawks. My co-host, Brendan Boylan, um, will not be on the air with me tonight, or he may pop in. As you guys know, Brendan goes to Gardner Webb, and he is a great and upcoming, I call him the Howard Cosell of the future, so he does a lot of broadcasting. But sitting in the mic with me is Head Almighty. I mean, this brother has a lot of knowledge <laughs> as well as a big head. <laughs> um, Mr. Thanks News Radio himself, Mr. Thanks News dot net, Mr. Thanks News all thanks inclusive, Mr. Thanks News app, the visionary of Thanks News Radio, Mr. Kyle T. Mosley will be sitting in with me on the mic. Tonight. What's going on, Professor? Um, make it, what's going on, KT? How you doing? Oh, now he's trying to talk all chivalrous and all polite. I don't know how this <laughs> how this show is going to go, listeners. Um, we. He starts off nice and kind, but we'll see how it progresses. We may get pop-ins from my cut buddy, Sharita the Diva Baptiste, and we may get in my other cut buddy, Remy, Remy Dominus Jones. They may call in, I'm not sure. But anyway, Kyle and I are going to delve in, and we're going to dig in, and I'm going to pass out mid-year grades and recap the Seattle Seahawks game, and then we'll talk about the San Francisco 49ers. And we may get into a little NFL news also. All right, let's start with this game. Um, the New Orleans Saints beat the Seattle Seahawks 25 to 20. And if you notice one thing about the series with the Seattle Seahawks and the Saints, Seattle generally wins when the Saints have to go out west. And generally, when they come to the Superdome, the Saints beat Seattle. So it is not as dominant as it has appeared to be. The reason why it seems so dominant was because before this game, we had to make three appearances, you know, out there versus the one appearance in 2010 where they came here. So it appears that whoever gets home advantage in this series, that's the team that usually wins. Well, the game started a little bit rocky for the Saints, and we'll get into uh, the more details with uh, Mark Ingram fumble and a miscue by Tommy Lee Lewis. And I was saying to myself, oh, God. I said, oh, my goodness. But I was correct, and what I stated to you guys last week, 
that there would be a lot of field goals by Will Lux. And Will Lux, I mean, really came through. In fact, he is my MVP for the game. He kicked four field goals, four field goals. I mean, the young fella showed, you know, really, really great um, endurance and being able to make his kicks, and they were all solid. You know, a couple of were shorts. He made a long one of 52. So I think, as I stated a while back, Coach Payton needs to just stick with this gentleman. You know, he may have missed one here or there, but this young man has a great future if, with the right coaching and if people just don't give up on him if he has a bad game. So that was great for Will Lux. Let's start now. Let's go back to the offenses. I usually start out in past five ways. Let's talk about Drew Brees. Um, Drew Brees played a solid game after the miscues on the opening first two drives. The Saints then had six consecutive drives where they scored points and put up 25 points. In all essence, this game should have really been a blowout. The Saints um, left a lot of points on the board inside the five-yard line on, on two of their drives where they should have scored. So if you look at the reality of this game, in all essence, the final score in this game really should have been 34 to 13. Take away the Mark Ingram fumble. The defense did an outstanding job. They only gave up 13 points and one touchdown. We'll get into elaborating about the defense a little later in this segment or in, throughout this broadcast. I don't want to jump to deep. I want to stay on the office. Oh, before I get started, this broadcast is sponsored by Feather Me Pretty LLC. Go out to Facebook. Check out all of the women apparel and all those great things that my dear sister Yvette Wilcox and my dear sister Patrice Serenio, uh, Serino has in terms of putting together a great, great, great product. So when you get a chance, go out to Facebook. You can see all the pictures of the product, and you can go out there and purchase the women's apparel that Feather Me Pretty LLC is um, providing. Just some great stuff. It is also sponsored by a consulting firm of Biz Cash Fast and DCS Consulting Services. If you need accounting, HR, project management, any of those services, go to Biz Cash Fast, click the link on DCS Consulting Services, and they will give you excellent help in the area of accounting, finance, HR, and project management. If you're in need of your business being streamlined to make your profits greater, contact the consulting firm of Biz Cash Fast, and they will also, once approved, tier two, help you with additional capital to fund expansion of your business, increasing your payroll, or any other means in which you need capital to grow your business. So check out those two consulting firms. Don't forget, if you're in the New Orleans area, the Mississippi area, and the Gulf Coast, and you have a son or daughter, or just yourself interested in getting into the entertainment business, go ahead and check my brothers out, Octar Anderson and Kimmick Smothers, with the New Orleans Art Media Institute, located right there on the campus of Southern University of New Orleans. Right out there in Gentilly, go out there. They can teach you all about the music business, entertainment business. Those brothers are doing great work and great things to help young people's dreams come to life. So check all of those companies out. That's Feather Me Pretty, Feather Me Pretty LLC, Biz Cash Fast LLC, DCS Consulting Services, as well as New Orleans Art Media Institute. Okay? So I want to tell you guys all about that. Also, don't forget, always check out our lineup. Tuesday night, the coach of the Who That Confession. I'm going to go jump to Coach Rick Gailey. Who That Confession with my main brothers, Rev Deuce, as well as Brian. Don't forget Wednesday night with Kyle T and the crew. Tuesday night starts at 7 Central, 8 Eastern. Wednesday night starts at 9 Central, 10 Eastern. And don't forget, you can go out there on Thursday or go to the website, and you can always check out Coach Rick Gailey, you know, our football dad for Kyle and I. and Coach just lays it down. You know, go out there and check it out and hear what Coach has. If he doesn't take live, he produces a show throughout the week and it is broadcast on the website. And then you can always come back. If you're not too tired or have too much to do on a Friday night and you've had too much things, come back and check me out as I wrap up the week. Don't forget to go to our website to listen to broadcasts that you may miss or past broadcasts, www.thanksnewsradio.com and www thanksnews.net. We also have the app. Go out there to your Android and iPhone, Google Play, as well as the um, app store on your iPhone and download Thanks News for all of your comprehensive 
Thanks information all combined in a great app that my brother Kyle T. Mosley designed and developed on his own. Really, really great. There is no other network, mainstream, alternative like Thank News Radio where we provide in-depth, knowledgeable analysts, and we give you all Thanks access. We allow you to call in, talk to us, ask questions, any of those things. If you want to call in tonight, feel free to call me at 504 504- Five three three eight four four four. I would be very delighted to hear from you, to hear your thoughts. Are you excited about the direction the team is going in? Do you feel we've turned the corner? How do you feel about the upcoming San Francisco game? Any thanks news that you want to discuss? We always ask to the listeners and who that nation, please, no vulgarity, no cursing. Make sure you have your phones turned down, that you're in a quiet area, so that we can clearly discuss and talk to you and have a good who that discussion. On behalf of Kyle T. Mosley and myself, we love you, Who That Nation. We love you, New Orleans Saints football team and the entire New Orleans Saints family. And we do this, Kyle and I, we've been doing it, following the Saints, combined 84 years. 42 for him, 42 for me. And also I want to send out my prayers to our brother Barry. Barry, get well, brother. I pray total healing and restoration to you in the name of Jesus. I pay total healing and restoration to you, Big T, our other brother from another mother. So, Barry, Big T, we love you both. Get well, brothers. We need you back on the air. And nothing else but stripped to you both of your families and your spouses and all that are supporting you as you recover from your sickness. I know all about that, having gone through many challenges and battles over the last 10 years. But I can honestly tell you, God is the healer. Jehovah Rapha will heal both of you. And we yeah. look forward to having you both, Barry, you back to riding them back on the air with us, and Big T, you back with your network. I want to give you right. a quick quick update yes, on Barry. Barry. Barry's doing better. Uh, he's uh, got his full of antibiotics, so he's doing a lot better, he said. And uh, Big T is doing a lot better as well. So the praise Man. God. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for that. Amen. Don't forget to check out, while I'm praying and talking, to check out our Christian network, Real Walk Network, on Sundays. If you don't have a church home or if you want to continue to be encouraged, inspired by the Word of God through prayer, check out The Elect Lady with Pastor Mildred Darlene Simpson. Check out on the network also, Dispersion Radio with Minister Terrence Johnson. And check out Life Experiences with yours truly as we do Sunday night prayer. And don't forget, really check us out this Sunday night because we're going to be praying for this election and that peace be involved no matter who wins, that we don't have any terrorist acts, that we don't have any civil uprising, and that everything that's going on and tumultuous things going on in the world, that peace, Jehovah Shalom, would be abiding and residing over this nation. So check us out on Sunday night. Okay, and you can be uplifted. We go live Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern with life experiences. Okay, so I want to give you that. So sometimes you need to put down the sports, turn off the TV, the NFL, and all of the other junk that's on TV, and you need to go and be supported and be encouraged through inspiration of the Holy Scriptures, through prayer, as well as the reading of God's Word. All right. Once again, so I got all of that out the way. Let's dip Kyle into mid-year grade, and a quick grade um, for the play of the Saints this last game. I'm going to start, as always, I start with, the, as the team go, the actual caboose and a locomotive and the front car that makes the team go, my main man, Drew Brees. Drew, um, Drew. Drew is an outstanding game, and if the Saints continue to win, there's going to be some serious discussion between he, Brady, and Matt Ryan. Because Drew, at this mid-year grade, Drew has over 2,300 yards. He's on pace very easily for about 50. He's on pace for 40-plus touchdowns. Um, He methodically, I mean, after that first series, Drew just was outstanding, you know, and methodically took what they gave. Um, the only area that they struggled in um, on the goal line, and they were playing a very tough defense, was the red zone. Um, one mistake was not Drew's fault, was actually Brandon Coleman, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And then the only thing at the one, I would like to have seen the Saints on first down to trick them through the ball 
because they didn't have much.